President Trump's second State of the Union address took place last night, and the whole chamber clapped and praised him all night long. Just kidding, Democrats are sour pusses. I will tell you all about it coming up today on The Hollywood Conservative for the Rebel. As many of you probably watched last night, the president gave his second State of the Union address. He covered all of the topics that you would expect him to, and I can't possibly go over all of them because the speech was well over an hour, so I'm just going to cover some of my favorite parts and point out some important things. The first thing that I noticed was that when the first lady walked in, everyone in the chamber is supposed to stand, and everyone did except for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Maybe she is too young and green and ignorant to know that you are supposed to stand for that, but alas, she did not. One of my favorite comments from the earlier part of President Trump's speech was when he said that America should move forward, not governing as two parties, but as one nation. Republicans stood up first, and then a few Democrats actually stood up for that. Not long after that, the president started introducing his honored guests. The president introduced three World War II veterans. One was Herman Zeitschik, uh, a Jewish American who helped liberate a Nazi death camp. The other veterans were Private First Class Joseph N. Riley and Staff Sergeant Irving Walker. Irving Walker, y'all, it was the most precious thing. When the president said his name, he bounced up from his seat and smiled and waved and gave Trump a thumbs up and just kept smiling at the president. It was such an amazing moment. Another amazing moment was when the president said that there is nothing in the world that can compete with America. Most Democrats actually stood up for that one. Uh, the president then said that we must reject the politics of revenge, resist redistribution, and embrace the potential of compromise and the common good. Most Democrats stood, including Nancy Pelosi. AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, sat there with a furious look on her face like a petulant teenager getting grounded. Speaking of children, throughout the entire address, the Democrats looked like obstinate fifth graders during the parent-teacher conference, and they know that their teacher is about to tell their mom that they are just like a horrible kid and a terrible student. That's what they look like, angry, defiant, and yet knowing deep down they are on the wrong side of history. Another one of the president's honored guests was released prisoner Alice Johnson. She was sitting next to Jared Kushner, crying. President asked her to stand. She stood and she cried and waved and smiled. The president thanked Ms. Johnson and she thanked him back. Something that we noticed at the State of the Union address last year, and it's something that definitely happened again this year, all of the Democrats sit there with these angry scowls on their faces when the president says something that should be unifying, something that they know they ought to stand for, they look around at each other, not knowing if they are allowed to stand. They are robotic drones with no freedom away from their tribe. What's even scarier is that Nancy is flying that drone. She is the drone operator. And with that being the case, Democrats, you guys are screwed, truly. And the best thing about the State of the Union addresses under this president is when the camera pans the Democrats. Truly, I think that's why 90% of America watches, or at least the people who aren't politicos and don't care about the substance of the speech. That is why they watch. It is funny and pathetic and sad all at the same time. And the president then spoke about the recent remarks regarding third term abortion and spoke about cherishing innocent life. Literally, there was a line straight down the middle of the chamber. Republicans stood and Democrats sat. Let that sink in. Democrats sat at the notion of preserving innocent life. He then segued into military, national security, of course, NATO and defense spending, North Korea, and eventually socialism and Venezuela, where he then said these powerful world words. Here in the U.S., we are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. Booze, people booed. Uh, America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free and we will stay free. Now, at that point, Fox News cameras panned over to Bernie Sanders, at which point he looked like he was going to cry. The president continued with this. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. Again, Democrats looking like they just ate a turd. And the closing remarks were even more moving than the bulk of his speech, and he said this. Our most exciting journeys still await. Our biggest victories are still to come. We have not yet begun to dream 
We must choose whether we are defined by our differences or whether we dare to transcend them. We must choose whether we squander our great inheritance or whether we proudly declare that we are Americans. We do the incredible. We defy the impossible. We conquer the unknown. This is the time to reignite the American imagination. This is the time to search for the tallest summit and set our sights on the brightest star. This is the time to rekindle the bonds of love and loyalty and memory that link us together as citizens, as neighbors, as patriots. This is our future, our fate, and our choice to make. I am asking you to choose greatness. No matter the trials we face, no matter the challenges to come, we must go forward together. We must keep America first in our hearts. We must keep freedom alive in our souls. And we must always keep faith in America's destiny. That one nation, under God, must be the hope and the promise and the light and the glory among all the nations of the world. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Now, over the course of the address, the president was interrupted 102 times by applause. Of course, 99% of those instances were Republicans clapping, and many Democrats were wearing white. Hmm, I remember another group of Democrats who used to wear white. I don't think that's a good look for Democrats who are trying to pass themselves off as non-racist, but hey, some things never change. Anyway, let us know what you thought about the State of the Union speech in the comments. I gave it an A+, plus, um, but let us know what you think. Give it a grade. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Amanda Head, the Hollywood conservative for The Rebel. If you enjoyed my commentary and want to hear more from all of us here at The Rebel, subscribe to our premium content at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. Make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitter for all of our latest news and download our app for The Rebel Media on the App Store. That way you will have easy access to all of our latest videos and your favorite Rebel shows. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Amanda Head for The Rebel.